and welcome, I'm your Code Monkey. The SSR is full of awesome tools and apps to help you make your own games. There's more and more awesome stuff coming out every month, so in this video, let's check out some highlights for June 25. This one is a list of paid systems and tools. In the last video, where you covered the best free new assets, and next one, I'll be covering top visuals and effects. As always, there's links to the asset in the description, and some bonus, you can use the coupon code Monkey 10 to get 10% off your order. And there's an awesome humble bundle that just started. This one has tons of tools and visual assets. For example, this really nice wireframe shader. You've got this tool to help you easily draw all kinds of debug shapes directly in your world. You've got a pack with a bunch of really cool shader effects. Then you've got some really nice dungeon props. You've got a bunch of everyday motions. Also some super cool cartoon VFX. And a bunch more stuff from a modular castle. You've got Fishnet Pro, some blood effects. You've got tons of icons, a bunch more characters, sci-fi bosses, dinosaurs, and all kinds of things. As always, if just one of these assets looks interesting, then the home bundle is worth it. So check it out with the link in the description. All right, so starting off with a new version of one of my favorite assets, it's Asset Inventory 3. This one is really awesome. I made a full review video on this asset just a while ago. It is now on version 3, and if you bought version 2 recently, then you should be able to get it for free. It showed up as free for me. Basically, this asset lets you manage all of your assets in one single place. So for example, if you buy assets from the Unity Asset Store, and then some more from the Synthi Store, then if you have various sub bundles or something from Fab, you can put all of those assets you bought in all those stores in just one single place. And then of course you can easily search for everything. So if you need a sword, you just search for a sword and it actually searches inside all the assets. So not just the title, but rather it actually looks at all the contents. And with a single click you can import just that one asset. So you don't have to import the entire package. It grabs literally just that one asset and all of its dependencies. This is really a must-have asset. Personally I love it and it seems like version 3 has some nice improvements. It has better performance, adds more custom actions, more custom metadata and tons more stuff. I definitely highly recommend this asset, check out my full asset review video on it. Up next, if you want to add some outlines to your game, then this Highlight Plus tool is absolutely excellent. Making good outlines is actually really difficult, there's a lot of weird edge cases, and this asset makes it really easy. And not only is it easy, but it actually looks really good. You've got some super high quality outlines. They are not just the basic expand the object shader, those are easy to do but look really bad. These outlines look absolutely perfect, and it's actually not just outlines. This tool, you've got all kinds of selection and targeting effects, all of them looking really great. Great. This is very much a complete package for all of your unit selection needs. Considering how many games have the player actually select something, like RTS games, simulator games, even action games that use something to highlight ledges and objects, a tool like this can really help make your game much easier to play for your players. Just easily highlight all the things you want your player to interact with. And then if you're into statistics, check out this dev trail tool. This one helps you track your habits so you can basically analyze how you work. This can be an interesting sort of tool. Personally I use one tool called Rise to track my whole desktop so I can keep track of basically how much I'm working. And with this one, you can keep track of that basically inside of Unity. So keep track of your session length, how long you were focused, as well as some nice one stats. So you can keep track of how many compilations, how much time spent compiling, how much time looking at domain reload, how many undos, redos, how many play modes, and so on. So you've got lots of nice one stats. You can keep track of daily or per project or lifetime. This one has lots of fun graphs and the whole thing is all completely offline. So if you want to analyze how you work, then this asset looks really great. Up next, here's a tool that promises help solve one problem that a lot of people have. It is called the Compilation Accelerator. Honestly, personally, I never really have this issue. Even on large projects, the compilation time usually only takes something like 5 seconds for me. But that's probably because I have a pretty great, very expensive PC. If I had something that took 30 seconds to compile, then I would definitely be annoyed. And there are several ways to try to improve that. First, you can use assembly definitions. I have a lecture on those in my Ultimate Unity Overview course. Or there are assets like Hot Reload that compile code on the fly. And this one seems to do basically a different method. This one seems to be more based on caching as much as possible in order to reduce how much you need to compile every single time. Then it's also multi-threaded, it minimizes garbage collection, and does some incremental compilation. So if you have issues with compilation time, then maybe try out this asset. Next, if you do a lot of work with UI Toolkit, and you like some super smooth graphics, then look at this tool. This one helps you add SVG support directly into UI Toolkit, meaning instead of rendering your assets using meshes, which always have some jagged edges, instead of that, it just renders these shapes perfectly, 100% smooth, no edges whatsoever. Then on top of that, you can also apply all kinds of effects. And again, all of them will be perfectly rendered. So you can change the color, add outlines, and all of them looks really nice. This one really looks like a great tool if you want a 100% crisp UI. Up next, we have a fun tool to help you reveal scene objects. It is called the Scene Revealer Pro. You basically define a list of scene objects, and then with a button, you can make them either visible or invisible. And the whole thing happens with a really nice, smooth animation. The objects just pop in and out of existence really 
nice, they slide in, they scale up and so on. This one works on any mesh, so it's a pretty nice fun effect. I can see this being great for some scene changes, like the character goes into a black void and then the new level suddenly pops up. The animation type is really nice, really satisfying, so I think just this one effect is one of those things that can really help your game stand out. After that, if you use object pulling in your games and you want a nice visualizer, look at this one. It shows you a visual display to showcase the status of the pool. You can easily see just how many objects are spawned, how many are in use, how many are idle, as well as what was the peak usage. With these stats, you can then pretty much find the perfect parameters for your pool. For example, if the peak usage is too low, then maybe lower the capacity. And if you don't have enough, then just increase the capacity. So it's a nice simple visualizer for viewing object pools. Up next, we have a nice system to deal with basically growing things. It is called the modular growth system. Now the first obvious example are plants and trees. You can set up all the various growth stages and swap between them. You can either swap them automatically, do it based on a button, based on resource, or pretty much any condition you want. But at the same time, growth can mean literally anything. So this one also works on buildings and other things. So literally anything you want to have multiple stages. You can have a building that has the first stage that is really small, then becomes really big, then gets an extension and so on. So basically if you're making a farming game or a building game or any game with multiple stages of something, if so, then this could really help simplify that system. Next, if you want to keep track of scene changes, here you have the scene history manager. The main selling point for this one is basically to help you with source control. Usually version control systems don't work very well with scenes just because the scene file isn't really made to support handling devs and so on. Whereas this comes from a tool, this one helps you do exactly that. You can make changes and easily see what changed between each commit. And then if something goes wrong, you can obviously just revert the changes on the scene back to the previous commit. It automatically synchronizes all the differences. So game objects that you added, things that you move, materials that you change and so on. So if you do a lot of scene work, like for example, a lot of level design, then I could see this being a very useful tool. And if you've got any skill or talent trees in your game, then this tool can help you save a ton of time. You define all the various nodes, put them in a skill bank, then just drag and drop them onto a grid. You set up all the connections and how exactly they connect. The whole thing is really versatile, easily set up all the skill requirements, and you can build multiple different skill trees. Either make them all fully visible or revealed over time. Now, many games use skill trees, so if that's your game and you don't want to build one from scratch, then just use this one. All right, so those are my top 10 new tools and systems on Unity Asset Store for June 25. There's links in the description and as a bonus, you can use the coupon code MAKI10 to get 10% off your order. And also check out my own free and paid ads on the store. Alright, hope that's useful. Check out these videos to learn some more. Thanks to these awesome Patreon supporters for making these videos possible. Thank you for watching and I'll see you next time.